So Russ Amber, who was part of Team Rivas, and for those of you who don't know, Russ Amber is also the owner of Rival Boxing, the glove manufacturer. And he's been in boxing for many years. He's been in the corner of many fighters, particularly uh, Canadian-based fighters over the years. Uh, Also Lomachenko, he's been in Lomachenko's corner. So he's an experienced boxing man, Russ Amber. And he did this interview with IFL where he was giving his take on the whole Dylan White situation. Now, interestingly, both he and Eric Molina, who's also now come out and decided to speak his piece with regards to uh, UCAD and his failed test for the Anthony Joshua fight, both Russ Amber and Eric Molina have put the blame for their respective situations on the British Boxing Board of Control and on UCAD, but not really on Eddie Hearn, interestingly enough. Um, Their take on it, well, particularly Eric Molina, he says, look, fighters fight and promoters promote. And the general feeling that you get from Eric Molina in this video is that you can't expect the promoters to, you know, pull their show over morality. Promoters are money orientated and they're going to do whatever they can get away with doing. It's up to the authorities, whichever commission, to step in and, you know, enforce some rules to prevent promoters from acting in an unethical fashion. That tends to be, or that seems to be the perspective that Eric Molina is coming from. Uh, But he is particularly scathing about UCAD because he flat out accuses UCAD of being a corrupt organization who essentially uh, demand money off you. This is what he claims. They demand money off you in order to clear you. You know, and he is adamant that the substance that he took was a fairly innocuous substance, which, you know, wasn't any kind of anabolic steroid or anything like that. I haven't looked into the Eric Molina case deeply enough to be able to verify what he's saying. Uh, If any of you have, please drop links in the description, in the uh, comment section below uh, to, you know, news articles and what have you, which give details on Eric Molina's case and exactly what he tested positive for. But Russ Amber, rather than blaming UCAD, he tends to blame the British Boxing Board of Control because ultimately they're the ones who sanctioned the bout. They govern the vast majority of boxing in the United Kingdom. And again, he says, look, Eddie Hearn's a promoter. Dylan White's a fighter. They both want to get paid. It's for the British Board of Boxing Control to step in and say, no, we need to protect the fighters. We can't have this fight go ahead if there's any uh, uncertainty about whether Dylan White is clean or not. Now, of course, Eddie Hearn keeps coming out and saying, well, why did they let it go ahead? Yeah, the, the insinuation being they let it go ahead because there was no risk to Oscar Rivas. That's the insinuation. But the waters are far too muddy at the moment for us to uh, agree with what Eddie Hearn is saying at this point. Far too muddy. (laughs) We, we, We need to wait until this fog clears and find out what all the facts are. I, at this point, it appears as though Russ Amber is making a good point in that the British board you, you would have thought, you know, as an outsider looking in, you would have thought that the British board would at least inform Team Rivas, um, pulled about, postponed about, you know, aren't they there to protect, aren't they there to make sure that promoters can't get away with doing unscrupulous things for money? And again, not to say that Eddie Hearn has done anything not unscrupulous, but this is the implication. Yeah. So I highly recommend this interview with Russ Amber. I also recommend the interview with Eric Molina. Russ Amber goes into the glove situation and the glove situation, he can speak more 
frankly about because of the fact that he was there. Eddie Hearn wasn't present during the whole glove fiasco. Eddie Hearn was at ringside. So Eddie Hearn is only hearing what members of his team or members of Dylan White's team have told him about the glove fiasco or maybe what members of the British board have told him about the glove fiasco. He wasn't there. He didn't witness it. Russ Amber was there. So just to go over it briefly, for any boxing match, the gloves that you wear, that both fighters wear, have to be inspected by the rival camp. So if I'm having my fighter wear a pair of Grants and you're having your fighter wearing a pair of Everlast, I get to have a look at your fighter's Everlast at uh, the glove meeting. You get to have a look at my fighter's Grants. And obviously the commission, the promoter, etc., also get to have a look at them. You, you look at each other's gloves, no objections. The commission inspect both gloves, no objections. They sign off on the gloves and that's it. Those are the gloves that you're going to use. And oftentimes, in fact, usually you'll also have a, a backup pair of gloves, which are inspected, you know, both sides and all that kind of business. So with Dylan White, Oscar Rivas, according to Russ Amber, Dylan White was supposed to wear a pair of Donados. That's what Amber said. And on fight night, and this is what was, you know, inspected at the glove meeting and all that kind of business and signed off on and agreed by both parties. But on fight night, when a team, when one of uh, Team Rivas was in Dylan White's changing room seeing Dylan White glove up, they saw that he was putting on a pair of fly gloves, not the Donados that he'd agreed to wear at the glove meeting that had been approved. So obviously, that member of Team Rivas goes back to Russ Amber and says, they're not wearing the gloves that they said they were going to wear that, that, that we signed off on at the, uh, the glove meeting. They're wearing a different pair of gloves that have come out of nowhere. So Russ Amber started protesting and he said, look, this is not right. We want to inspect those gloves. And he says that the British board flat out refused to allow him to inspect the gloves. The British board apparently said, Dylan White's already got the gloves on. He's not going to take them off now for you to inspect them. So Dylan White ended up going into the ring with gloves that had not been inspected by Team Rivas. That is <laughs> terrible. That's all I can say about it. That's terrible because it is standard procedure to let both parties see the gloves that the other party is using and inspect them. That's standard procedure. Yeah? But to, to go into the ring with a pair of gloves that Team Rivas hadn't been given the opportunity to inspect, I mean, that's absurd. <laughs> that's completely absurd. It doesn't take that long to cut the gloves off and uh, let the other side inspect the gloves and, and, you know, put them back on. It's only going to be a relatively minor delay, 15 minutes, maybe, you know, but I suspect that Dylan White was in an extremely bad mood and Team White in general were probably in an extremely bad mood, perhaps because of this UCAD situation. And maybe they were being so uncooperative that the British board were like, let's not even press the issue. You know, I don't know that for a fact. I'm just speculating. Now, Ross Amber also says that his, because there's a lot of people who at the moment want to throw the British board and British boxing in general under the bus. Oh, it's all corrupt. It's terrible. Don't go over to the U United Kingdom. Ross Amber says that his experience with fighters in the UK, you know, coming over to the UK, working with multiple fighters over the years has been 99.9% .9 positive. And that, most of his dealings with the British board have been extremely good. However, he says that the two times he's had, uh, he's been present for fights in London, his experience with the British board hasn't been good. He says that when he's been in Liverpool, Manchester and other parts of the UK, the board members present at those fights were great. But when it came to his experiences in London those two times, 
He's had poor experiences. So he's saying that the, that the people that he saw, the representatives of the British board that he saw at the Rivas fight were people he'd never seen before. They were board members that he did not recognize. He also said that Robert Smith, who's the chairman of the British Board of Boxing Control, was not there. Interesting, isn't it? Because it's a big fight. Where was Robert Smith? Ross Amber believes that if Robert Smith had been there, things would have been dealt with a lot more satisfactorily from his perspective. So very, very interesting interview. Highly recommended. All of you should go watch it. It's just one perspective, of course. There are many perspectives of the same situation, but it's definitely an important one to hear. And Eric Molina, again, if any of you have got more information about his failed test, please drop it in the comments below. Um, he's talking about, you know, Tyson Fury having this backdated ban and Molina saying, why can't I get a backdated ban? And he said, it's because I won't pay them money. If I pay them money, they'll backdate my ban. <laughs> I don't know about that. You know, I, I'm not an insider in the situation. But yeah, have a watch of this as well and tell me what you think in the comments section below. All right, it's happening. I'm out.